Hey guys, November 3rd, and we have the FOMC meeting, which I'm going to only very briefly talk about, and then I'll do like kind of a full recap of it in an off episode for the weekend or something like that. Um, I want to talk about today MGM following up from a kind of a weird earnings report that I think the street is taking one way. I'm actually taking it a slightly different way. I also want to discuss CF industries, which man, I'm really, really frustrated with the analysts sometimes because, and it's actually echoed by the CEOs of the companies, of course, especially when they do the quarters that they do and they end up with opening up the screen this morning in the red. So I'll talk about CF, MGM, and also um, booking just to demonstrate kind of the collective of what those three are actually showing you is happening, particularly in the US, but also some of the themes that we're that we've been talking about are absolutely playing out and this market is so temporary and so you know um gun shoddy if you will like it's so gun shot that it just reacts in this crazy way you always want to make sure that you have some cash and then take profits in areas where you know it won't make sense for next year let's go ahead and share the screen past performance it's not indicative of future returns as per usual we'll go through what typically um, what we typically do, which is just to review the markets. And if you look at this, the indices started out so red and have more or less recovered flat. If you're a member of gurula.net, you would have gotten a signal um, that to buy the S&P because it really did hit exactly right on the nose. David's um, algo signal that the S&P was oversold. And really, when you look at earnings this season, you can tell that there is just, I don't know if it's sector, if it's rotation out of equities into cash for the year end or what, but this market is so weird. Oil and gas below 90 right now is kind of interesting, but nonetheless, that is what it is. When we go to Finviz, you can kind of see that pretty much everything is recovered except for big cap tech, which continues to be in the red. Tesla um, gave you an opportunity. This morning, you had an opportunity in so many things. It's not even funny. And I would continue to encourage you to take it because when I look at the earnings as I'm seeing them, way more companies are coming in with still having top line growth and bottom line growth. That's despite the fact that you do have to kind of like rumple through the numbers because a lot of them are taking charges knowing that this year is kind of over and they'd rather start the next year with a better slate of accounting. So we're seeing, we're seeing like you really, you can't just read these numbers and then not go fully through the releases. Or in some cases, you really do have to go through the K because given all the notes that are in there, you're going to get it wrong. You're going to actually get it wrong for lack of a better way. And you sure cannot go through the headlines right now because it's almost as if they have the world's youngest analyst working in the evenings, just publishing whatever. It is so crazy what actually I'm seeing in the releases and then listening subsequently to the call just in case I might have gotten it wrong and what I'm seeing in the news items as headlines or otherwise. It's actually kind of ridiculous, but let's go through it. These three are wonderful examples of why I feel the way that I do on that. So let me share my screen once again. Um, okay, let's first talk about earnings. Booking, I'm only going to go briefly through, but booking was so strong this quarter. It, it's not even funny eBay and Etsy, I need to do a separate episode on because eBay came out with its release that it did better than expected. It was not a good quarter. So like literally, that's why I'm seeing it's some junior analyst writing whatever's in the release, desperately trying to pull headlines because that kind of quarter should not get you up 3%. At one point, it was up like 5% or 6%. It's ridiculous. Etsy, actually, there's a lot of stuff in that number, so I'm going to need until tomorrow to really come back to you guys. And MGM, I don't know who's doing analysts analysis on these things anymore, because some of the things that they pulled were important, but they're not the MGM story in any way, shape, or form. But what all of booking MGM, Hilton from last week tell you is that Marriott and Expedia should actually do okay, better than okay. CF, sorry, I have that on the wrong day. CF reported this morning, had their call this morning. And that is the most ridiculous reaction I've ever seen to a company that is crushing it 
the only other thing that I saw that's as ridiculous is Devin from yesterday, but we know how this market works. So, you know, buying opportunities all around. Now, let's actually talk about MGM and why I think that the news flow is ridiculous. Okay, here's MGM up 26%. Does this look like a massively negative number on net income? Yeah, it does. Until you actually go through and look at what that number is. Okay. There was a gain on the consolidation of city center last quarter. And then there was DNA of 1.4 million. Why was there DNA of that? That's because they sold Mirage and they bought two other properties. And by the way, they sold Mirage at 16 times EBITDA. The two properties they bought, Aria and Cosmopolitan, they bought at five times EBITDA. Okay. So this is the story of MGM is this massive turnaround of, of properties on the strip toward greater profitability. And they do have, as a result of that, the strongest balance sheet of any of the casinos that are out there. Okay. So there's that. Once you do all the rejiggering of the numbers, you do end up with, um, actually a pretty decent quarter because when you add that back in and then remove the benefit of city center you end up with this number where you really are if to get it apples to apples you have an like an up two percent which isn't much until you realize all of the turnaround that they've been doing this was a record year on room on rooms right and this casino number it has none of China in it. So the story has been the entire time with MGM trading at five times um, earnings, but then let me show you EBITDA. The whole story is if China picks back up, it will flood the casinos with back with its original customer base, which really is the Chinese customer base. Let me show you what happened in China, okay? In China, this is the only headline they picked up. They picked up that there was some greater fee in China. And yeah, it was bad, but it wasn't like so unexpected, I'm going to say. The real, okay, China is still running at 72%, like down 70. So it's only 30% of, of what the casino revenue was in 2021. And that's been this entire time because of lockdowns. They did talk about that on the call and they're doing what they call dynamic zero COVID policy right now, which is they're already starting to open up Macau to China, but there's various rules and regulations related to what happens if they find someone with COVID and what are they going to do to quarantine, et cetera. So the, the data point that we needed, which was China is going to start to open up Macau happened on the call. So this is what it means to the numbers. First of all, um, this is this is 2021 where they were still closing down China. Remember, China had a weird delay of things as relates to Macau because of because of a lot of different reasons. But they were like, nobody from the West is coming, but we will kind of do this one set of things. And you can see that um, this is what it looked like. So revenue was down a lot. EBITDA was down a lot. But this is the last quarter of it. So it's crazy to think about it that way. Um, if, if it actually goes back to 2019 numbers, which will take time, but we're kind of coming around the corner, that means that China not only helps with Macau, but it helps with the other regional properties in the greater China region. So it's a little bit crazy for it to be so aggressive given what they talked about on the call. And also, by the way, all the other businesses are for the most part doing okay. Let me show you, this is EBITDA, which is a better way, I think, to really look at how the quarter went, given all the corporate action that's happening. And if you look at this, you can see that China is negative still on this quarter, and it's been negative for the entire year. So this was really the last hurrah. There's one other thing that it really has to watch out for, and for whatever reason, the news flow went crazy on it, but it's been in the disclosures every year for like the last five years. So it's kind of nuts. And it's just a renegotiation of the licensing with Macau. Let's be really crystal clear. China's not going to want to run these um, casinos by themselves. What happens for all the casinos is they get a license from the, the Macau government. There's different sorts of things that they have metrics that they have to hit. They hire a bunch of locals in, you know, that are a part of that whole package deal. And then we move on. 
And these deals are done usually a 10 year time frame, 20 year time frame, I think was the original. That was when China was in a different place. Now China's in a different place. So they're going to keep the leases ever so slightly shorter. But just to show you right now, there's no EBITDA coming from China. As soon as that flips, this number, that is not 2019's number, by the way. Okay. So these, these casinos in China can be wildly profitable. If you, if you sum up this column though, Las Vegas was so profitable that it carried even the little baby blip that you saw in the regional operations. Now, this doesn't include the sports betting that they purchased. That thing is really small right now. It will become bigger right now throughout the United States and other places. They are working not just MGM, but, you know, Las Vegas Sands has its own. Everybody has their own sports betting um, or uh, digital betting kind of platform. So that eventually will be something very interesting, not, not relevant to the numbers currently, so to speak, but probably a big deal in the future, given how profitable some of those companies have been, even in small cap land. The thing I would mention, though, is when you sum this column up, you still have EBITDA up 22%. So it, it wasn't a bad quarter, for lack of a better way to describe it. And if anything, the fact that Las Vegas has almost fully recovered at this point is crazy, crazy positive. The regional operations, by the way, there's some licensing that they may get in New York. So that could be another data point of positive for them. Obviously, there's licensing happening in a couple of other states because guess what? We want the revenue. That's what it comes down to. The United States wants the revenue to pay off some of this debt that's happening. So MGM actually is in surprisingly good shape. It is still hella cheap, okay? It is hella cheap. If you look at the market cap and then you add this number to that, just assuming that next quarter is going to be better, which it will be because you get the holiday season, plenty of travel to Vegas then, then you can see that at $3 billion, given its market cap, this thing is cheap, okay? All right. Now let's talk about CF Industries. Let me just explain this to you. This company does not give guidance. So the nonsensical street number, which I always want to barf every time I see the earnings, the, the news flow that comes out of it. Oh, let me stop share for a second. CF does not give guidance. The only guidance that you're seeing these company misses are coming from analysts that even the CEO said on the call, these are analysts that probably have never been on a darn farm, for lack of a better way to describe it. The CEO said on the call, and you can find it in the Q&A section, because all the analysts were pushing him. And he's like, look, I don't know why you're thinking this quarter was bad. We don't give guidance. So that was your number. That was not our number. I think what you guys maybe want to consider is that people don't plant stuff in the third quarter. They plant it in the fourth quarter when you get the seasonality. You start to get the purchases in the fourth quarter with Brazil and India is starting to look at what they need for the next year. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> okay, so let's look at what actually happened at CF and why I think it's ridiculous that it's trading the way it's trading right now. Revenue growth up 70%. The reason it's 70% is even to this day, China has not described, suggested, talked about in any way, shape or form hinted that they will be releasing nitrogen, period. And by not releasing nitrogen, we're also talking about not releasing, releasing hydrogen because the real thing is ammonia urea, which also has industrial use. That industrial use is energy related. So as it so foresees in the future, they're thinking next year looks pretty darn good thus far. Revenue growth up 70%. You can see it doesn't even make sense to comp net earnings or EBITDA to last year, because last year was negative. This is a turnaround story. It's crazy positive now. And all they're doing is paying back debt and buying back shares. And if you look at how much they've just started on the buyback, it's ridiculous. I'll show that in the next slide. Oh yeah, here we go. So they already bought back 14 million shares. Okay. That's like a big number. That's 7% of the stock. And they're going to keep going because they're minting cash right now. It's ridiculous. They had a hundred. What's that? Are you recording? I, oh, shoot. Am I not recording any of this? I thought it was recording. Yeah. 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 Okay, good. Hold on. Let's just make sure. Oh, yeah. It is recording. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for the reminder that always scares me when I'm on a roll. Okay. Sorry. Um, let me let me share my screen again. 
All right. So <laughs> thanks though. I, you know, I'd rather have someone tell me I might accidentally not record it. Okay. CF Industries is just minting cash. Okay. They've already bought back. This is, you can do the quick math. That's seven and a half percent of their stock. And they're going to keep doing that. Why? Because they're making a ton of money because the, the shortage isn't just coming from farming anymore. The shortage is actually coming from the fact that Europe has no energy and they're going to look to everything from hydrogen on down to make up for that capacity. So they think things are great. So if you just take the nine months and add back in the EBITDA they made, then you have about $5 billion worth of EBITDA on a 21 billion market cap company, which means this thing is trading at about quick math, four times enterprise value to EBITDA after this month's earnings. That's ridiculous. That's actually ridiculous for a company. Now let's talk about demand because this is where everybody got crazy. The, you know, the articles are about demand. Guess what? The failure to actually create more damn demand isn't coming from lack of demand. It's coming from the weaknesses that we've had in the railways. Okay. That's the issue. It's not, it's not countries. It's actually countries. Let's be clear. Farmers purchasing for an entire country. <laughs> like it's not that people don't want nitrogen. They desperately need nitrogen because right now there's a massive shortage. So here is the tonnage. They did get the tonnage up, but the tonnage was only up 16%. Why do I think they're actually doing phenomenal? I think they're doing phenomenal because revenue growth was 70%. So, you know, all of this nonsense articles, all of these nonsense estimates there, that's just what it is. And I think the CEO, as politely as he possibly could, when he was pushed by these analysts, was like, hey, is it possible that you don't understand the seasonality of farming? Um, so that's what was happening. Again, this chart is very interesting. Their, their discussion on what they were thinking, they're actually baking in that this happens from India. If we get you know, the potential range is up here as relates to the metric tons that they might end up exporting if this is what they think, like this best case scenario is, and it'll be in line with this year, but at higher prices essentially. And then the same thing, Brazil, they are suggesting that Brazil imports already look to be here, but there's a possibility that they're significantly higher than what's already been um, designated, if you will. Okay, let's move on to booking. The export market still very strong. It's really Brazil and India, but quite frankly, there's you know everybody under the sun that might need it, especially if if uh, urea and ammonia just keep getting taken out of the market uh, due to energy demand. Okay, booking. Booking was crazy strong, and this is what I keep telling you. Other than the cruise liners, which still have kind of a funkiness that they have to work through, travel is really strong, really strong. And we've got Expedia, and we've got uh, Marriott reporting tonight. We've got revenue up 29%, net income up 116%. That's just economy of scale. And by the way, Expedia, having fixed so much of its technology during the COVID period, also should, we're hoping for a knock on wood, get economy of scale. Operating income up 28%. Okay, so fair enough. Let me be very precise. Some of it is economy of scale. They did have to pay personnel. They have to pay their staff. But you know, some of it is some of the charges that were weird from last quarter. That's why you get net income up so much. But it's a good business. It's a strong business right now. Travel is going just fine. And interestingly enough, they talked about it. American Express has talked about it. Everybody's talked about it. A lot of it is business travel is actually going okay right now. And so um, that is what we're seeing from booking. I'm going to go ahead and hit the stop share button, but there is just so much going on right now. Um, what an exciting earnings season. I think people are struggling to digest the news flow that has come out and what it implies for the macro. <laughs> hey, David. Yeah. Um, MGM, I mean, that uh, it's been as high as 100. Yeah, it's cheap. Oh, That's no. the thing. Like, like this flip on China should already be baked in. It's ridiculous. Yeah, well, I mean, money management is a quarterly game, so that's why. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you get any kind of news flow or announcement on China, this thing is going to bullet train upwards because there's no reason it should be at the valuation it's currently at. Right, right. Um, also, Prop 27 is on the ballot for, in California. Yeah. 
fourth largest con- economy in the world. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I mean, what, gambling what is you say about New York. There's lots yeah, of things. It, yeah. I have to double check. Cause I, you, I, I don't want to get the, the citation wrong, but it's okay. the New York, New Jersey. This area is also doing some attempt to fundraise via casinos. I mean, look, the thing that's crazy about casinos is it's only because of COVID that these guys aren't doing great. If you go back to every single crisis economically that we've had, casinos have always been acting like a consumer staple, quite frankly. People gamble in bad times and in good times, right? but they really gamble in bad times, strangely enough. Now, the the China, I'm, I'm assuming they then the Macau, they don't have sports, sports book, right? It's not as big. I mean, they'll have, they might, um, ha- look, they have all kinds of betting. <laughs> so if it exists, they will bet on it in China. They, it's not, the, the, sh- the layouts of the casinos are a little bit different because um, the Chinese are full on gamblers, but they'll bet on stuff like NASCAR and stuff like that. World Cup. Okay. Um, CF Industries, it traded down to 95. Was that on earnings? Ridiculous. Yeah, they trade on earnings because in theory it missed estimates. And now I'm pretty sure that whoever's making those estimates is someone that has no idea the industry at all. Like that's, that's the only thing I can think of. It's nuts. This was one of the best earnings. They This actually was record earnings for them. They did say that on a call more than once. Record revenue, record earnings, record everything. And yet the streets somehow came in higher. How? How can you come in higher than like your earnings going from zero to 400 million? Like this is like ridiculous on the quarter, no less. It's back to oh. 105 now. Yeah, okay. it should be much higher. This is a joke. This is why I literally can't handle these street estimates these days. They make no sense to me. I don't even know when they put them in, quite frankly. Like who put it in? Yeah, the P is 8.6, so yeah, cool. No, 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 that's a stale number. Oh, it is? Yeah, that's not after this last earnings. Okay, so P is lower. Or, sorry, actually, lower. I'm sorry, I was thinking EBITDA. You know, I haven't looked at earnings because I usually just look at enterprise value EBITDA. And the reason I look at that is because they're paying down their debt so aggressively, I feel like the earnings number doesn't really explain what's going on here so the the debt portion will come out of enterprise value pretty aggressively making the enterprise value even smaller as we go through uh, so, yeah. does it pay a dividend actually it does now <laughs> strangely enough but it's a world's smallest dividend because they really are coming out of a period of you know um there was a time when cf like cf didn't really make money until this year before that, they were kind of a turnaround, but they're through their turnaround now, more than through. Yeah, that's a, it's like the been major. A great, you've been in that one a while. Well, you know, I was afraid to be in it until basically um, this nat gas issue, until the, the whole Russia situation has happened. And the reason, um, first of all, they did mention that, like, you know, you can't go without nitrogen. So there are definitely countries still buying CF's nitrogen, I'm sorry, Russia's nitrogen. So it's not about the war ending is gonna change the landscape for nitrogen. It really is just China. China's the only country that could really change the landscape of what's going on. And that really comes down to one thing. You might be able to let people go cold, but you can't let people starve. But, oh, but there is one challenge because even though Russian uh, nitrogen is still on the market, according to what we heard on CF's call. They're not necessarily, remember, the major input for nitrogen, at least in, it, it's got to be some kind of energy source. For for China, they make it a lot out of coal sometimes, but we make it mostly out of nat gas as a byproduct. And so what they did say is that there you're not getting more nitrogen coming onto the system because as much as like people still might be buying whatever's coming out of Russia, Russia's kind of redirected some of its efforts, so to speak, to other things, other priorities, if you will. So in general, supplies down. Right. What Credit Suisse has adjusted their uh, their price target to eighty. How on will, CF. I wonder why underperformed CS Credit Credit Suisse on CF, right? Oh, God. Weird. 
I don't understand what these people are seeing. Maybe they're just, I don't know. Maybe people are smarter than me. I don't know. I'm willing no, to go with no. it. But... I'm, saying, I'm saying that might be a reason it was down earlier. Yeah. No, everybody came out really negative on CF this morning. And I have no idea why. I just don't understand what they're seeing or how they're thinking about it. We have a food shortage. Nitrogen is required if you want actual food to be created. Nitrogen has been the only thing that has allowed this planet to feed this and, and grow its population. I don't understand. I, I just don't understand. I mean, do they think China is going to come out and dump a bunch of nitrogen onto the, the market? There wouldn't, there's no evidence of that thus far. And if they do, that's hella bullish for MGM because if China's opening up, then cool, that will really help MGM. So it's just, I don't know. I feel like maybe... I, I don't know. Well, maybe you're right and they're wrong. So there you go. Again. Yeah. I mean, I could see a world where China opens up and they still keep their nitrogen. And I think the reason they keep their nitrogen is because for the last like two years, all first of all, China wants to grow its population. That's why it stopped, you know, one child policy in a big way. And, right. and it's got to feed its population. So, you know, but that said, there is excess capacity for nitrogen in China. That's always been the case. I don't know. I just, I don't see it. I don't see it. Okay, cool. Very nice. Okay. May, thank you. And we right. will talk to you soon. All right. Good luck in these markets. It is flu season. So everybody stay healthy. Bye guys. <laughs>